What is up everybody? In this video, I'm gonna show you the productivity techniques I've used to create these YouTube videos, to create a high-level course for Manning Publications, and many other programmers use to create world-class software. Let's get started. So the name of the technique is something called the Pomodoro Method. If you've never heard of it, a Pomodoro is a 25 minute interval of work followed by a five minute break. Now, wait a minute, Phil, this sounds like some hokey stuff you may be saying, but I assure you this is far more nuanced and difficult than it sounds. The catch here is that it must be 25 minutes of highly focused labor. You can't check your phone, you can't check Facebook, you can't answer emails, you can't answer the person knocking on your cubicle wanting to know something that's urgent that really isn't urgent, they're just trying to drain your time. You can't deal with any other distractions, you must engage in totally focused work for 25 minutes. Now, it may sound like not that much time, but once you actually do it, you'll see 25 minutes of focused labor is actually quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's more than it sounds, and it's something you may even have to work up to. Why 25 minutes? I don't honestly know. That is kind of the historical precedent. The particular bit of software I'm using called Kanban Flow has the uh, feature that you can actually uh, increase or decrease the Pomodoro time lengths, but I leave it at the default 25 minutes because I found that it works quite well and it's hard enough to do 25 minutes of focused labor. So I first encountered this technique from the Simple Programmer channel uh, hosted by John Sonmez, which is now Bulldog Mindset. He kind of pivoted directions, but he recommended it uh, for productivity reasons and uh, it kind of got me hooked on the method because I discovered that it is indeed a great way to get stuff done in a efficient and effective fashion. So now the key here is that the work must be focused and the magic is in precisely that fact. The problem with the way most of us work is that we have these uh, stupid little gadgets next to us and as soon as it beeps, we run to check it. You know, if we get an email, a little notification will pop up, we check it. Uh, someone, you know, calls us, we feel we have the answer. So that is actually the biggest thief of your time and your productivity in the modern era. And the reason is this, there is a penalty for what is called context switching. So what that means is that your brain focuses on some tasks and you may even get in what is called the flow state. I'm sure all of you experience this where you lose track of time, you just keep working and working and working and everything seems to fall in place, kind of like magic. That's called the flow state where you're just uh, flowing from you know one thought, one thing to another. And that is the ideal way in which you should work. Uh, it's very difficult to reproduce. It's not some, you can learn to do it, but it's not something that uh, most novices will be able to kind of conjure up easily. And particularly if they are beholden to all of the distractions of the modern era. And that is what the Pomodoro method see, seeks to uh, get rid of is the addiction to answering all of these notifications. Uh, and you, what you'll discover is that most things that you think are urgent actually aren't. So some practical tips, uh, just put your phone on silent, disable all notifications. If you have a compulsive need to check something like Facebook or Twitter or any other social media, there is software that you can install. Uh, I think it's like Focus or something. I don't use it. I don't have that kind of compulsion. So uh, fortunately, I never needed it. But if you do, then look into software to actually block the offending websites that will derail your attempted progress. Now, the Pomodoro method is one piece of the puzzle. And the other piece of the puzzle is what you see here in front of you, and that is the Kanban board. So the Kanban board is a way of mapping out tasks uh, into sub tasks basically and so you can see how a a project for instance can be laid out into various different steps that can be executed in sequential fashion to achieve your end goal uh, this is the board from uh, when I started creating my course reinforcement learning in motion for uh, Manning publications and it uh, has columns here you can see on the left is done is pretty much all of the tasks uh, because I executed all of them. The rest of the stuff that isn't done, I was trying to add up the amount of time I spent on the last three units. It turned into like 50 hours for the last three units because I, you know, creating courses is a lot of work. So it took a, uh, so I basically moved all the tasks back over so that I could see how much time I'd spent. That's why they're not in the done category. But so for something like content creation, this is really great because you can kind of guesstimate how much time it's going to take after you've done it a while. 
the time of making the course, I didn't know anything, so I estimated it one Pomodoro for everything, and it turned out to be <laughs> horribly wrong, but that's neither here nor there. So the Kanban board allows you to map out tasks in such a way that you can see how everything fits together, and you can move things from the in progress or due today column into the done column, and that gives you a sense of accomplishment. And all of these are broken out into Pomodoro, and it even tracks how much time you've spent on a given task. So you can see most of these are over an hour, 35 minutes, stuff like that. So they're all more than one Pomodoro, but that's not really a big deal. On the bottom, I have a color-coded legend where uh, the yellow is supposed to take one Pomodoro, the green is two, blue is three, and the pinkish is three plus Pomodoro. So uh, you can, if you are good enough at estimating the amount of time a task takes, you can color code it so you can plan out your week in advance. Now, I don't plan my week in advance because I have a one-year-old child who is uh, quite free-spirited, so planning isn't exactly uh, a viable option, and that's the reason I kind of got away from the Pomodoro method because I wasn't able to do 25 minutes of undistracted work. Anytime I sit down to work, you don't need to do something for the child. They're incredibly needy. Uh, don't have them until you're ready, but uh, it... it um, it kind of derailed my my practice of using the Pomodoro method, but nonetheless, I was able to use it to finish this entire course. So, and I didn't start until the second unit. Uh, I didn't know, didn't really mm, think I needed it before the first, the before the second unit, but I was incredibly wrong. So, uh, this is how you lay out the tasks, and a default board will even have days of the week so that you can plan out all of the events you want to do for the week and then move them to different days so that you can execute tasks on those days. Now, one thing you may be wondering is what happens if you uh, are working on a Pomodoro and you finish the task early? So one thing you do then is just go up to the timer up here and click on change task and you can select a different task. And you can see I'm running it right now for recording this video. Uh, so that way I can stay in a focused state, assuming the cat doesn't doesn't try to derail me. But you can just switch tasks if you want uh, midstream. It is not recommended to stop the Pomodoro. You want to really stay in that state of focused work for as long as possible. So work for those 25 minutes. If you finish one task, go ahead and start working on another. Another question you may have is, uh, what do you do on the break? So it's followed by a five minute break. Now, one thing you don't want to do is grab your phone and start answering emails. You want to do something like stretching. Stretching is really great. If you're sitting down, you should be stretching. Uh, guys over 30, you know this, that uh, you start to feel a little bit of tension. And I'm in my late 30s now. It only gets worse as you get older. So stretching is a great thing to do while you are on the five minute break. You can start to stretch and really just... Uh, kind of think about the next task or ruminate on the task you just completed. So it's a really a great way to take that break, refresh yourself without really losing that flow state to the extent possible. Uh, but you don't want to do anything like uh, starting on a new task. You don't want to do any video watching. You don't want to do anything that triggers a dopamine release in your brain. That's going to really derail you. That's a separate productivity tip. You know, uh, if you have difficulty working before uh, if you have difficulty watching videos or doing some entertaining task while you're trying to work, just work first. Don't even start the first second of video. It really triggers dopamine release in your brain, and then all bets are off, and you're just off to the races, and, and everything gets derailed. I've done that myself. But So another question you may have is, um, what about programming? Does programming really lend itself to 25-minute intervals? And in fact, it actually does. Uh, and it's actually quite good for programming because... Uh, you don't want to tinker with a 25-minute interval, but you'd be surprised what you can get done with 25 minutes of dedicated coding. Now, you don't necessarily have to be clickety-clacking, typing the entire time, but you need to be intensely focused on the problem. So at the very least, even if you're not typing out lines of code, you are thinking about the problem and attempting to make the next step in the problem. You can also use it for debugging. You can use it for planning. It's also great for that. Uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but I have many many different uh, Pomodoro for you know debugging and planning things of how I'm going to continue with the project and other stuff that has to be done. So there are many different uses for it. Uh, it doesn't just have to be for content creation. It's for really anything that uh, you need to achieve a deep focus state to do effectively. One limitation of this particular bit of software is that you can't be working on a task 
from one board while you're looking at another. So I have a separate board for YouTube. And so I tried to put this task on the YouTube board and then come over here to show you guys how I you know, laid out the course. And that doesn't work. So I have to have the task down here on the bottom of do today. And I'll just move that between boards. You can move tasks between boards. You just can't be working on a task from a different board while looking at another. Uh, this software is totally free. You know, I don't have an affiliate link or anything for it. It's free anyway, but uh, I highly recommend it. It's uh, really allowed me to make use of very limited time. As a new father, time is very, very limited. So uh, the uh, this software really allowed me to crank out the course in a reasonably timely fashion. There were some other... Uh, other bottlenecks with other people I had to rely on, but you know, you can't help that. So one other point to consider is how many Pomodoro should you be doing in a day? Uh, well, uh, that's a great question. So the, are there many different schools of thought? What I've discovered is for for me personally, between 8 to 12 is a solid number that allows you to achieve progress every single day in a sustainable fashion. If you need to do larger bursts of doing, you know, 16, 18 in a day, that is possible, but it is not sustainable. And you may think I am, you know, you may think I'm being weak or you may think I'm exaggerating, but I encourage you to try it and you will see that if you attempt to sustain bursts of focused work for an extended period of time, then uh, you're pretty much going to be screwed. You're not going to be able to do it. Uh, and the reason is that there's only so much focus you have in a day. And if you use up some from the next day, you know, to kind of borrow from tomorrow today, to then you're eventually going to have to pay back that debt. It's just like exercise. You can only recover from so much exercise in a given amount of time. And indeed, that's, you know, the big principle behind, you know, uh, building muscle, you know, you kind of build up a big debt of fatigue and then rest and allow it to to be repaid and you grow muscle in the process. And this is kind of similar. But the key point is that 8 to 12, shooting for 10 a day is a really good amount. Uh, and you may notice that 10 equates to about four hours of actual focus labor and about five hours of time on the clock and with a 50 with 50 minutes of break. Um, and that's four hours. It may not seem like much, but it is quite a bit when you're doing focused labor. Uh, we're so accustomed to having distractions, doing uh, so many different things at once, trying to multitask, which doesn't really exist, uh, that we think of uh, long spans of work as being the norm. And in reality, you're only actually working in a given day, maybe a few, three, four hours. Anyway, this is just a way of condensing it into a more manageable time frame and making sure that you get things done on time, effectively, and efficiently. Another question you may have is, what about meetings? Uh, a lot of your day may be taken up by meetings with customers, with managers, with your peers, and meetings don't count. Uh, in fact, meetings are some of the least productive things you can do. I've only been in a handful of productive meetings in my life, uh, one of which was you know, at, at, in a task force at Intel when we were under significant pressure to solve a very, very costly problem. Uh, we were basically told to work on nothing else but that for a couple months at a time. Uh, and that was a, a time in which meetings were productive, but we were highly focused on a single task with a strong motivation to get it done. Most meetings are just, you know, fluff, people trying to flex on their manager, you know, trying to, trying to make themselves look good. Really, most of it is, is just total wasted time. So meetings don't count as Pomodoro. Um, you can, I wouldn't even count answering emails as Pomodoro unless they were emails that required actual thought to craft. Like if you were doing, say, uh, sales emails, cold, uh, cold emails to generate leads, then that could be Pomodoro because you should be writing well-crafted sales emails. Maybe I should make a video. I've done, uh, websites. I've tried to do, I've done cold calls. I've done cold emails and, uh, I get a lot of cold outreach on LinkedIn and they're all boilerplate and these people are total, total uh, amateurs. Uh, so if you are a independent web developer, independent uh, freelancer of any type, you should be doing highly crafted, highly targeted emails and those could be Pomodoro. But if you're just answering, you know, ridiculous work stuff, no, those don't count as Pomodoro. And so uh, that kind of ties into the concept of doing more work in a day. Uh, you can do more work than four hours. I'm not implying that you can only do four hours of work. It's that you can only do four hours of really focused work, right? Uh, maybe four, maybe five, you know, sometimes even less than some days if you had less sleep. But between three to five hours of really, really focused work. And then you can do work on other things like answering emails or, you know, whatever other tasks that have to be done that don't require a lot of mental bandwidth. You can certainly fill several hours with those and, you know, keep pushing and moving the needle forward in that way. Uh, but the Pomodoro technique is just for stuff that requires 
highly focused labor, and you're really limited to just three to five hours a day with uh, respect to highly focused work. So I, I hope this is helpful. I rambled a little bit. I'm kind of tired. We just moved. You can probably tell by the change in background maybe, uh, but we just moved, so I'm exhausted. Uh, but I want to get this video out to you guys. I think it's an important one. Uh, it's something that really helped me to crank out this particular course, which is something I was quite proud of. Several hours of really high-quality content, and certainly much higher than my YouTube videos because I'm charging money for it. Uh, but uh, it's a great technique. I encourage you to uh, employ it in your own work and your own projects. Report on your experiences below. I look forward to hearing them, and I will, will see all of you in the next video.